And the comparsas, once known as street comparsas, became the typical way of making music at these carnivals. In 1886, slavery was abolished in Cuba. This liberated more than a quarter of a million slaves who couldn't stay in the countryside where they had worked because they had no land. Nor could they go to the city because it was very expensive. So, they built dwellings on the edge of a few cities out of any available material. There, they settled, bringing their culture with them. Perhaps the most important cultural feature of these groups was the rumba. It emerged from large colonial houses which were built around a big patio. Formerly, these houses were used by one family. Now, 20, 30, 40 families gathered in a single house. Each family had a room. The bathrooms and patios, which were often used for cooking, were common areas. Many activities took place on the patios, among them, the rumba parties.
The rumba is perhaps the most important musical and dance manifestation of the Cuban. And it emerged from these patios. In the beginning, it was played on any percussive object and accompanied by singing and dancing. It could be tapped out on a bureau drawer or a chair or with a spoon on a bottle. This made the rhythm, or polyrhythm, necessary to start the rumba. For Yambu, we used a series of new elements, the cajones. They are made in Matanzas by a man named Marin Marquez, and they have a unique sound. For the Colombia, we use a combination of cajones and tumbadoras. The cajon, the box drum, didn't start with the muniquitos. It has been used for a long time, though perhaps in another form. Yes, forever. But it wasn't the cajon as we know it now. It was candle boxes, soap boxes, fish boxes that were used as instruments. Now you have the cajon which has a little more presentation. It's painted and it has a different sound. Often they chose the cajones. Not all have the same sound, so the one that suited them best, they stayed with. But we wanted something better, to get closer to the real rumba. We decided to make a set of cajones out of wood. We made them here, in my house, but with a sound that was different from the rest. Well, we succeeded. Angel Peyado was the creator. He made his cajon and brought it to the group. They had to accept it because it was lovely. He gave the secret of the sound to me as I will give it to others before my time comes so that it won't be lost. It's a well-kept secret. Very well-kept. <laughs> In Matanzas, the rumba developed a lot, and many important rumba groups emerged there. Perhaps the most important group in the history of the Matanzas rumba is the Muniquitos de Matanzas. 
One day, somebody said, let's go to record in Havana. We'd never done it before because we're all workers. Some of us worked in the sugarcane fields. I was a machinist in the port of Matanzas. Katarina was a dock worker. So we went to record something small in one day. We recorded two songs, Los Monequitos and Los Peodos, and it became an incredible hit. Another thing, people call us Los Moniquitos, but that isn't the official name of the group. It's Guaguanco Matancero. But we can't call ourselves that because nobody knows us by that name. They know us by the nickname given to us in the neighborhood of Belen because of the song we recorded called Los Moniquitos de Matanzas. Los Moniquitos, which are cartoon characters, talks about popular comic strips like Anita Guafinin, a character called Manteca, and others such as Dick Tracy. The song kept talking about the Muniquitos. We have to say Los Muniquitos. The people changed their name. Anita, la huelga Anita, con el piloto llamado Manteca, que se le caen los guapos y la gallina se lo caiga. Cartele, bohemia, me queda ella. Ay, mira si es buena que todavía tengo sensación. Andamos buscando el fantasma de sí, que ahora viene vestida. Estaba. There were Esteban Mandri and José Luis de Alfonso, the duo that started the Muniquitos de Matanzas. That pair was marvelous. They were singing until 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. At that time you could sing in the rumba in the El Gallo bar. But nobody was thinking of forming a group. The first Guaguanco group that started here was formed by the late Julian Mesa. There were four of us. Salguera said, let's form a group, a rumba musical group, and we'll rehearse at Catalino's house. They gave me the job of finding the different rumberos, because I knew who knew how to play. I found people like Juan and Pablo Mensa and all those people, and we began to rehearse. It started there. The Moniquitos have a history of more than 40 years. Their international influence is relatively recent, but interesting things are happening right now. We've um, completed two tours in the United States. This is our first time in Canada. We've played in England, Spain, Mexico, Costa Rica, and we have several invitations to go to Europe and South America.